You can actually manipulate how you tie the boot to take pressure off. Lace them up different, leave spots open. By actually taking the pressure off the top of the foot, take the pressure off that nerve bundle. Now what we've done is we've secured that ankle in place. Just gonna lace it with a climber's lace. It's a rainy day here in Bozeman, Montana. I'm here at Kenetrek Boots. Uh, I'm gonna go get my feet measured for a pair of boots. I can get into the right size and just learn about what I can do to make boots fit my feet better. My name is Joe Wingem. I'm with Kenetrek Boots. I run the production side of the company. The company is owned by Jim Wingem. We have 48 different style boot shoes, we sell gaiters, we sell a little bit about everything, but mainly about the feet. What people don't realize, feet are a lot like fingerprints. They are completely different, even the left from the right. Also, as we get older, as we age, as we gain weight, our feet change. Most people have an arch that slowly collapses over time, which spreads out the foot. So you may have been a size 10 in high school, you're 40, you're 50 now, and you might be a size 12. And that is one of the most important things about fitting a boot. You have to get in the right length. That being said, one half size is equivalent of about one sixth of an inch. So you can't be wrong by much and not cause blisters or black toe. Let's go ahead and fit you up and see what you think. So the first thing you wanna do when you start fitting somebody is you wanna make sure they have a Brannock. You wanna stand on the Brannock. We're gonna start with your left heel. Place your left heel all the way back inside of the Brannock. Now, this on the side is gonna measure how long of an arch you have. Everybody has a different size arch. This is gonna measure our width and this is gonna measure our length. So with your foot in it, put all your weight down on the Brannock device and then whatever the last line is that you can see is where you want to go. If you're anywhere close to that last line, you want to go up a half size. You are a size 10, and that will be in all of our boots. Okay. So you want to stay with that sizing. Now we're going to check the other foot because everybody has two different size feet. Yeah. This one's your bigger, so your right foot is your larger foot. This is going to come in right at a 10 and a half. So you want to measure your both feet. Once you have them both measured, you want to go with the larger of the two. Your standard arch is absolutely fine. When you start to look at it, you're coming in. So you're going to be at a extra large uh, footbed or insole inside of the boot. Um, your width, you're going to be absolutely fine. You're a standard width. So you don't have to go wider. You don't have to go narrower but a 10 and a half is going to be a perfect mountain boot for you. Okay. So I would go 10 and a half across the board, across the board, just mm -hmm. to obviously you don't want two different size boots, but right. <laughs> exactly. And what you're going to notice is it gives your, your foot a chance to catch up with the other foot. Yeah. Um, the arch support is going to be the same. You can always be a little too long in the boot. You can never short yourself in the boot. Um, when you start to look at it, a lot of us have a nerve bundle that runs right up the center of the top of our foot. Th that's what's so unique about a single vamp boot. It allows this boot to take the shape of the foot. So it will actually spread out where my nerve bundle is. I can actually lace these up and I can actually tweak every one of these laces, eyelets or grommets. They actually move so I can take pressure off my foot anywhere I get a pressure point, wow. which makes it extremely unique uh, ability to actually get the boot to take the shape of your foot. I, I've had this, this problem with boots where I start walking in them and my tendons will start killing if I have a high boot. Mm -hmm. and I don't know, is it fit? Is it like, what would cause that? Do I need to stay toward? I've had better look, luck with the lower boots like this bottom one. I think mm -hmm. that's what I'm running right now. Hard and scrabble. I've had better luck, mm -hmm. but what, what's causing that and how do you fix it? It can be a couple of different things. You can actually manipulate how you tie the boot to take pressure off the calf. It depends on how large of a calf you have. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing by having a single vamp, it allows this boot to spread out where most boots can't. If you have stitching down the middle of a tongue, that boot cannot spread out. 
it is stuck there. That is, I mean, that is the most it's going to go. It's not going to go anywhere else. That's also a leak point. Any stitch you have on the front of your boot is a fault point. Hmm. That's why we do it the most expensive way, by making it with one piece of leather all the way around it. Okay. No stitching, no faults. But what you're going to notice in the back, you're going to have that actually curved so every time uh, you lace that boot up, it's going to actually give way to the back of your calf. So it will take some of that pressure off of the back. Okay. This also has an extremely pronounced heel cup, allowing your heel to sit back inside of the boot. As long as we get in the right size and we get enough miles, it should take care of you. Okay. Okay. okay, so when you start to lace this boot up, you want to set your heel. So set your heel all the way back in the back of the boot. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to snug it up just like this. And I can show you several different ways to lace a boot. Mm -hmm. Regardless of who makes the boot, it will take pressure off of your foot. But you do want a nice snug fit. Yeah. You want to go around twice always. Okay. So you're going to just do a basic climber's knot. And okay. what that does is that make sure that that boot never loosens up as you go uphill. Yeah. So you don't have to stop every three miles to re-tighten your boots. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and tighten the other one. So and as you can see, there's no stitching on this tongue, so it's gonna allow this boot to continue to open up or close up to surround your foot. Every eyelet and grommet on this boot swivels. Uh -huh. So with that, you can actually swivel this. If you get a hot spot as you break in the boots, you can swivel that away from that hot spot. Okay. So we can tweak this down, up, wherever we need to. So now you've got uh, the right size boot. Now go ahead and walk and you can feel that natural rocker kind of propels you forward every step you take. Yeah. Okay. Now if you do end up where this is getting a little too loose right here or you're doing a lot of uphill, go ahead and put it up here, I'll show you how to tie it so you don't have nearly as much movement on the boot. So this is your ankle lock right mm -hmm. here. So we're going to skip that ankle lock and go above it. Okay. Then we're going to come back down just like that. Okay. Now what we've done is we've secured that ankle in place. Now we're going to go all the way up. Wow. So now that being said, what you're going to notice is the boot is much tighter around your ankle, yeah. but it's taken all the pressure off of the top of your foot. Okay. And so, so this type of setup, if I tie my boot like this, what's that going to prevent? That's going to prevent that heel from lifting up into the back. Okay. So this also takes all the pressure off the front right here. So if you start to get a rub up front, you can also go ahead and br get, bring me this one up. If we look at it, if you ever do have your foot start to fall asleep, and this is why a single vamp boot is so nice is it lets you manipulate where the pressure points are on the boot. You can, by actually taking the pressure off the top of the foot, take the pressure off that nerve bundle. Since this is a single vamp boot, this can continue to open or close according to your foot. So it's truly the only boot on the market that is going to take the shape of your foot when you wear it. That being said, right now I can lace this boot as tight as I want without having any pressure on the top of the foot. I'm going to again come up here and come down. Now I've locked my heel in place. It's not going anywhere. And I've taken all the pressure off the top of my foot. If you have a high insole, that, or excuse me, instep, that will also take care of that. Again, just going to lace it with a climber's lace. 
pull it through and it will not open up. But this will allow to continue to spread open so it takes all the pressure off the top of your foot. I can do it over the top of my toes. I can do it here. I can do it here. I can manipulate these back down if need be, if it's bugging me here. That's why we use the eyelets and grommets we use. They're completely maneuverable. I didn't even think about the ability to just tie them different, lace them up different, leave spots open. Leave spots open, and you can do this all the way down since this is a lace to toe. If you have a very wide forefoot and you start to get rubs on your toes, you can open up these laces down here and spread that boot out completely. So it allows you truly to manipulate the front of this boot from start to finish. So any hot spots you can take care of. Very unique in making boots. If you have stitching down the front, you can't do that. There's no give. The stitches hold it in place. Okay. That's awesome. So back to my 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 issue, like so what would right cause, up here. It's it's actually right here, right in, okay. in that tendon. If and I, it's it's just rubbing and rubbing. Well, it's not rubbing. It's it's the actual tendon. And after a while, I can feel, feel it, it moving. Mm -hmm. I can, and it's it's terrible. And well, so I've went to the, these lower boots because it seems to fix the problem. But. Well, and what it is is anytime you have pressure up here. But what you can actually do with this boot. Now, I wouldn't suggest this going up the mountainside, but you can relieve some of that pressure right here mm -hmm. by doing the same exact thing as we did down below. What that does is that allows this to give. Yeah, so if I have more movement up here, that's gonna fix that. Fix that that's down here. But I wouldn't start with that. I would start with it laced all the way up because nice. this is designed to actually give as you go up, up yeah. the hill. And then just see what, see, make adjustments as you go, basically. Right, and then adjust, and that's where most of us fail. We're too busy glassing, eyeing, looking for the game to actually pay attention to how we feel until it's too late. Yeah. If you start to get that hot spot, stop, yeah. adjust. Uh, the steeper you go, the more locked in I want to be in my boots. Mm -hmm. So you'll see me increase all the way up by doubling up all the way. So on a standard foot, I'm going to go as tight as I can before I start. I am going to lock it in. I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to lock it in again. Just like that. Wow. So now, I mean, as you can see, you've got it locked in here. You've got it. The boot just doesn't move on your foot. And again, I'm going to double it up. And then I'm going to double here. Just like that. And the other thing that you have to remember, especially with our archery season getting so warm now, you know, last year it was 84 degrees during archery. You can sweat out a cup of water per foot per day. Wow. Now think of that. Take a cup wow. of water and pour it in your boot. The easiest way to avoid that is open up the boot. And when I say open up the boot, if you stop and you're going to glass a hillside and you know you're going to be there for 20 minutes, if you open up the boot like this right here, you'll notice 70% of that moisture come out in vapor form. Mm -hmm. If you don't, while you're sitting there glassing, all that vapor, that sweat inside turns back to moisture, saturates the foot, the foot gets raw, that's where you get a blister. Okay. So just doing that when you stop absolutely does a tremendous job. Okay. All right. So blister prevention, what, what do I, what are the things you look for and how do you prevent that? Uh, you have two things that cause blisters. It's movement and moisture. Now I showed you how to tighten up the boot to where you have very little movement. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you have to break in this boot seven millimeters. So when you look at this boot, you have a seven millimeter nylon midsole that you're trying to flex. Yeah. It takes a lot to get that to start to flex. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to break it in. If you break in a good boot, you'll have that flex point. You're not going to get blisters. Um, the other thing is moisture. No cotton socks. 
you want a good merino wool mix or a good uh, polypropyl liner. A good sock combination, and people often make the mistake of going with a super thin sock and only that, and they're doing a very rigorous hunt. Well, your boot isn't designed to actually fit that tiny sock, so you want to stay in that medium range. You can always put a little more on, but the more sock you put on, the less uh, air pockets you have inside, so your feet will get colder by putting on more socks. That's one thing to remember in the winter time. Yeah. Okay. And just like that is as high as I would go with yours to see if that helps that tendon. Yeah. If it bugs you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I would just start out doing it normal and then do it normal it and me, then then it adjust it. Okay. And like I said, with all these eyelets and grommets able to move you can move those flex points so you can take any pressure point off of the boot okay. and they'll stay in place once you release it. Uh, I didn't even think about trying to do that. I mean, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, and most people don't. They don't realize how much, how important your feet are for on a hunt, but how much you can manipulate a boot is amazing. Yeah, I, I would say on like the Canada hunts, well, and in the past, Maybe I borrowed a boot from somebody, you know, and yep. it wasn't quite the right fit, but it was like, oh, here's a nice pair of boots. And so I'll put them on, and then that's the number one thing that, that causes discomfort on the hunt, and it basically makes it miserable yep. because your feet start to blister. You got my Achilles is hurting, and just, it's just yeah. by the By the time you're done, you're in so much pain, you're just ready to end it. Mm -hmm. And... If your feet stay comfortable, you, the hunt is so much more pleasurable. Yeah, oh yeah. So, huh. so I always say, you know, you get a good pair of boots. I can go without the Leica binoculars. Yeah. I can't go without a good pair of boots. Yeah. Yeah. So, because you use them every step you take. Jason Carter here with the Epic Outdoors. Uh, here we uh, publish a monthly magazine, December through June, bi-monthly the rest of the year. Talk about all the western states, draws, kill percentages, best units, things like that. And so anyway, it's very intense, Gen generally 120 to 150 pages each month. Um, we'll cover all the different units, sizes of rams, you know, largest ram, average ram, drawing odds from both the resident and non-resident perspective and whatnot. And so anyway, all western big game species in all the western states. So. Uh, it's pretty aggressive. We, um, we also book hunts, help guys find landowner tags. Um, we apply guys for guys that want us to do it that are too busy. So anyway, it's very involved, um, all-encompassing service for Western big game hunting. And we also deal with Canada, Alaska, Mexico as well. So anyway, you're welcome to call us. It's $100 a year to join and uh, we consult with guys every day. So that's what we're here to do. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, we've got extensive knowledge in all the Western states. We've been consulting for years and years and years, probably 20 plus years, um, and hunting all across the West. So anyway, our members uh, get to call in fairly regular, whatever they'd like, and, and go through their different application strategies as well as what they're thinking with the points they have and, and uh, where they need. They'd like to have a little bit of help, and we're, we're here to help them. So anyway, in a nutshell, that's what we do.